in Genesis, Jehovah lays a set of curses on the serpent after the eating of the fruit in the Garden of Eden. And I think they have consequences with Cain and Abel immediately afterward. So the discussion of the serpent in his head and the bruising or crushing of the heel and the head I think may possibly be misinterpreted in the most commonly mentioned interpretation of the passages. Eve is not the progenitor of Jesus as the genealogies in the gospel say. Either Luke or Matthew, there's one that goes all the way back to Adam, but that does not include Cain. So it's not the Adam from the Genesis 2 creation who is the ancestor of Jesus or the line into which Jesus is born. When Jehovah says to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, there's a pattern set up. There's a certain order in which the matching up occurs. The serpent or his seed are always mentioned first in those two passages. So it was implied to me that perhaps when people read in the third passage that he will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel, the he there might not refer to Eve's seed but to the serpent's seed. There's a set of attempts to impose a curse which have within them the anticipation of the recipient trying to get around the curse or get out of it. And each attempt to get out of it creates another obstacle or another curse that counters it. So that's curse and counter curse or curse and reaction, curse and response. And the best way to make the curse work then might be to make the third part of the curse difficult to read so that the recipient won't realize what's going to happen. And that might be the rationale behind the indistinct language so that when they say he, the recipient of the curse, won't know who the he refers to. And the most devastating way, I think, to make the curse work would have it as something of increasing severity each time the recipient tries to circumvent the curse. So it starts out enmity between you and the woman. And so the serpent might think, well, I'll just get rid of the woman and I'll be fine. But then it says, between your seed and her seed. And then he might think, well, I'll get rid of her seed and I'll be fine. That could be what happens with Abel. But then it says, which would otherwise be redundant, he will bruise your head, you will bruise his heel. So if that refers to the serpent's seed, then that really hurts. And that's something that might come up unexpectedly because the serpent thinks that all of his troubles are over because the, by saying the, that the one who bruises him is Eve's seed, he thinks it's, it's done with. This could come up with the offerings that Cain and Abel make. If Abel is Eve's seed and Cain is the serpent's seed, then the serpent's seed is, is hurting his progenitor because the offering Cain, Cain gives is plants. He grows crops. Abel raises animals. Now imagine if your Yehovah or your father represents the serpent or echoes the situation of the serpent then if you try to offer up plants to a serpent, well, snakes don't eat plants. They eat meat. So you've given him something to eat that isn't of any use. There's also the question of Cain's relationship with the ground. It's like a, a bruising, a mutual bruising. The ground cries out when he murders Abel, as if in a way it's been, been murdered and snakes after the cursing are the creatures of the ground. They're, they're especially made for burrowing. And so there's a lack of harmony between Cain and the ground. And if, if that represented the perspective of the serpent, then Cain would be the one treading on the ground, but also being rejected by it. So 
he bruises the ground or those who are in the ground and they bruise his heel as he walks on the ground. If the mark of Cain were put on his heel, that would also be like a bruise. But there's something that echoes later on in that if I've made my previous interpretation correctly or partly correctly that the Nephilim are the descendants of Cain, then if you continue the, the trend of the serpent seed down through the history of the Bible, the ones who made them, that is Yehovah, because Cain, Cain is a man who's gotten with the help of Yehovah when Eve says he's been born, then those are Yehovah's people. The descendants of, of Cain are descended from the divine conception of Cain via Yehovah. And if there are descendants of them later on in the Promised Land, then Yehovah is sending the Israelites to wipe out his own people, his own seed. So in that respect there is enmity between Yehovah's seed and his adopted seed, the Israelites, the people he takes over, try, tries to take over as his own, who are also the product of interactions with Elohim. And the question of then is, are Elohim and Yehovah exactly the same, or aliases of the same God, or are they different entities? There seems to be a certain brother against brother internal conflict inherent all the time, because even when Yehovah is the one who conceives, or when Isaac prays to Yehovah to have a divinely conceived child by Rebekah, the product of it is a set of twins. So they're, they're still contending with each other, Esau and Jacob are. And there's something inherent in the divine conceptions that leads to this sort of conflict, brother against brother, seed against seed regardless. So the curse might be an expression of the internal conflict of the one who does the cursing. <laughs>